Static electricity and charge. Remember when the video pause indicator comes on to do that and take great notes. Static electricity is everywhere. I'm sure you've had an experience where you've uh, rubbed your feet on the carpet and uh, you've touched something like a doorknob and bzz, got a zap. Well, what is static electricity? Thales Miletus, uh, really the original uh, Greek philosopher and one of the seven sages of Greece, uh, was the first to study electricity. And the word electricity means amber-like. He noted that charge could be developed by rubbing fur uh, with amber and amber is fossilized tree resin so if you rub uh, like rabbit fur with uh, on uh, tree resin uh, the amber then uh, it created static electricity and uh, so static electricity was first studied using this triboelectric effect that's the uh, name for it and uh, it uh, means charging by rubbing materials together one material gives up charge to another material Dun, 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 dun. Charge! A balloon, which is rubber, is rubbed with a silk cloth, another material. These two different materials interact to produce charge. Excess negative charge is left on the balloon. Excess negative charge is left on the other balloon. The two balloons have been charged in the same way so like electric charges must repel each other. Now a hanger. Negative charges are rubbed onto the hanger. The hanger, charged like the balloons, repels them. The silk attracts the charged balloons. The charged balloon is attracted to the wall. The dipolar water molecules are attracted by the brush. The cup is charged by friction. The polar water molecules in the stream are attracted by the charged cup. By walking across the carpet, the boy is charged and gets a spark from the doorknob. The uncharged brush does not move the banana. The brush is given excess electric charge by rubbing it on a cat's fur. Now the brush attracts the unlike charges in the banana and repels the others. So the charges in the banana are moved to different locations with the unlike charges on the side near the brush. Hence, the banana is attracted to the brush. There are a couple of things to take note of in that uh, video with static electricity. Uh, with the balloon videos in particular, uh, we saw that there was an electric force in all of the videos. And uh, we saw with the balloons here that uh, that force was not just a push or a pull, it could be a push and a pull. For example, when we had the hanger here that was rubbed on the silk cloth, the hanger came in and there was a push. The balloons pushed apart. But then when we, went, then when we saw the silk cloth that had been rubbed on the hanger, we brought it by the balloons, there was a pull. So that's very unique. That electric force, there must be one type of charge on the uh, hanger. There must be a, a different type of charge, an opposite type of a charge on the silk cloth. Not only that, but when you look at these videos here, what you'll see is that the hanger doesn't have to touch the balloons, and the silk cloth doesn't have to touch the balloons. The force, like gravity, is working at a distance. So quite a few things we can get from just that simple experiment. I think this next video will really convince you of the push and pull, the attraction and what we call repulsion of charged objects. You may have to rewind and watch this video again because it is a, they do a great job, but it's very, very fast. A graphite-coated styrofoam ball is charged by conduction and serves as a charge detector. The two metal spheres on insulating rods are discharged by the touch of the experimenter. As the charge rod approaches the sphere on the right, like charges are repelled from the right sphere to the left sphere. 
After the metal spheres are separated, the right sphere has a net charge opposite in sign to the rod, and the left sphere has a net charge of the same sign as the rod. The hanging sphere has the same charge as the rod. Thus, the left sphere repels the hanging sphere, and the right sphere attracts the hanging sphere. Touching the two metal spheres without the charged rod being nearby permits the spheres to return to their uncharged condition. Neither one interacts with the discharged hanging sphere. Wow, that was a lot of information fast. If you didn't catch that, you might want to watch it again. It's really good, but again, pretty fast to, to pick up. Well, what it showed was that there's positive and negative charge. And uh, that was proposed by Benjamin Franklin, uh, that uh, he had a concept of, of electricity as being like a fluid, and that uh, when he rubbed uh, one material uh, against another material, it would cause some type of a flow. And uh, if there were too, was too much charge, it would be positive. And if there were too little charge, it would be negative. And he theorized that since there is an attraction and repulsion of forces, uh, that there must be these two states of charge, positive and negative. Down below, you can see the, the, uh, there are two types of uh, two illustrations. To just show a charge by itself, we uh, have a little plus sign within a sphere, a little sphere, um, or a negative sign within a sphere. These other lines out here are called electric field lines. And we're going to be looking at elect electric fields also. So this is the charge, and these are the electric field lines. Notice, notice that the electric field lines coming from a positive charge go outward radially. And uh, again, they're pointed outward. And then the uh, charge here, the negative charge, causes the electric field to come in radially going inward. Uh, this would be great to, these illustrations would be great for your notes. This attraction and repulsion leads to, dun dun dun, the law of charge. And the law of charge basically says that opposite charges attract. So if we have an excess of positive charges and a excess of negative charges, then they will be attracting each other. We can see the electric field lines showing that attraction. These arrows are force vector arrows. So unlike charges attract or opposite charges attract and like charges repel. So if we have excess negative and excess negative, the field lines actually push away from each other and the, and the uh, charges push away, away from each other and go in opposite directions. You could also have a pos positive charge and positive charge that would push away also. So that's what we mean by like charges, charges of the same type. Well, we've seen some electric fields already, but what are electric fields? Well, an electric field is the area around a charged object that produces a force on another charged object. So this charge right here, these charges don't have to come in contact. This charge has a field around it, and this charge has a field around it, and therefore those fields interact, and these charges, in this case, since they're opposite, would attract toward one another. The positive field lines would be pointed and going toward the negative charge here. If we had like charges here, positive charges and positive charges, those field lines would run away from each other and they'd push off of each other. Kind of if you had two hoses spraying against each other, the sp they would spray and, and the spray would push the hoses away from each other. This is a little bit clearer illustration of the repelling uh, fields here, these electric fields. This shows attraction. Uh, strong attraction and this is uh, actual electrodes and these are um, uh, filings that line up uh, here in that electric field. So this is a real imaging of an electric field. One electrode is connected to the negative pole of the power supply and the other is connected to the positive pole. The electric field lines form a pattern of curved lines leading from one electrode to the other. The two electrodes are connected to different poles of the power supply. The electric field lines curve out from the wire and toward the oppositely charged flat plate. 
The two flat plate electrodes are connected to different poles of the power supply. The electric field lines between the plates are lines perpendicular to them. At the ends of the plates, the electric field lines are curved. The two wire electrodes are connected to the same pole of the power supply. The electric field lines between identically charged rods are ones of repulsion. They curve away from one another. There are two ways to charge something. One is by conduction, where you have one object here that's charged and another object that is neutral or less charged. And when they touch, charge from uh, this object will transfer over to this other object and the charges will distribute uniformly so that when you pull these apart the charge that you had initially and charge is given the symbol Q the charge you had initially will split equally half and half here so again charge is given a symbol Q and the total charge would have been distributed equally when this charged by conduction the other way to charge something is by induction. So if we bring a charged rod near this neutral material, and it was neutral because it had an equal number of positives and negatives, like this if it was uncharged, it has an equal amount of charge. If I bring the charged rod nearby, then the positives will move away. Since this is positive, they'll repel, and the negatives will pull to the side and attract. Well this side of the sphere is negatively charged and this side is positively charged and that's ca called charging by induction through the electric field where there's no contact. So there's no contact and yet we can induce a charge. After contact, the charged rod and the hanging sphere have the same sign. As the charged rod is brought near the neutral metal sphere, charges of like sign are repelled to the fist. Since the fist is removed first, the sphere is left with a net charge opposite in sign to the charge on the rod. The metal sphere and the hanging sphere attract each other. The charged rod repels like charges off the hanging sphere through the fingers of the experimenter. So the hanging sphere has a net charge opposite in sign to the charged rod. The two objects are attracted to each other. The charged plastic strip repels the hanging sphere, so they must have the same charge at first and be opposite in sign to the charged rod. The experimenter then, by induction, using the plastic strip, changes the sign of the net charge on the hanging sphere. The hanging sphere is then attracted to the plastic strip and repelled by the charged rod. Wow, again, that was really fast, but really good if you uh, rewatch it uh, and uh, understand it. Uh, so early on, these uh, crazy machines, this Wimhurst machine right here, and also Van de Graaff generator were created to create static electricity by rubbing stuff together. Check these out. We can build a machine to rub two things together continuously. See what happens then. Does this remind you of lightning? What causes lightning in the sky? The generator can be regarded as an extremely high voltage source from the fact that air does not ionize until the electric field exceeds 30,000 volts per centimeter, estimate the voltage of the sphere relative to the grounded ball. Some force is pulling on the balloons. If I take away the electrical charge, the balloons are released. No matter where I move the box around this charge sphere, the box is always attracted so that the string points to the center of the sphere. An electric field seems to extend out from the sphere in all directions. And scratches parting thought. And question. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.